start with the next part of uh, stability and root locus analysis. Uh, in the first part of a root locus analysis, uh, we have seen the steps which are involved in order to go for preparation of the root locus uh, in the graphical representation format. And uh, here we will see one example related to the root locus analysis and on the basis of the final root locus which we are going to plot on the as a graphical representation on the basis of which we can define many more things related to a control system. So, let us proceed with the numerical which is involved for root locus analysis. So, here we will take one example. Uh, we are considering a open loop transfer function which is given as g of s into h of s as k upon s into s plus 5 s plus 10. And for this type of system, we have to go for drawing the root locus diagram. We have been asked for to find out whether the system is stable or not. So, first according to the steps, we will proceed and we will find out one by one that how we are going to draw finally the root locus plot of the given example. So, as per defined on the basis of the rule number 1 and rule number 2, first we have to find out the poles and zeros of a system. Now, if you just go in the example itself, to define the poles and zeros of a system, the first thing what you have to take into consideration is that we have to define the system in terms of a open loop transfer function. What is meaning of open loop transfer function? It is the product of g of s into h of s. So, the system representation in any format, it might be a block diagram, it might be given in terms of a direct transfer function of a system. We are interested in the part of the open loop transfer function, that is nothing but a product of g of s into h of s, which is going to define the open loop poles and open loop zeros of a system. So, already we in the given numerical we have got in the same format and therefore, g of s into h of s that is k upon s into s plus 5 into s plus 10 is the open loop transfer function. Here we will find out that the denominator of this particular open loop transfer function that is s into s plus 5 and s plus 10 this denominator is going to define the open loop poles and the numerator is going to define the open loop zeros. So, there is no term of s in the numerator and therefore, those there is no question of 0. So, there is no 0 in the system, but here we have got three terms of s which we can define that they are the open loop poles of a system. So, these poles can be represented as s is equal to 0, s is equal to minus 5 and s is equal to minus 10. So, these three are the poles of a system. So, number of poles are 3, number of zeros that is z is 0. Okay? And we have defined where they will fall on the s plane as s is equal to 0, first pole, second pole s is equal to minus 5 and the third pole s is equal to minus 10. So, accordingly, the first step has been defined over here. We have found out the poles as s is equal to 0, s is equal to minus 5 and s is equal to minus 10. There are no zeros of a system and to define out of this three poles, when we say that the number of poles when it is greater than the number of zeros, then we have put down in the steps that if p is greater than 0, then p will be equal to the number of branches. So, here the root locus branches are nothing but equal to 3. So, 3 poles corresponding to 3 per root locus branches and out of this 3 branches, the part what which is defined as p minus z that is 3 minus 0 means 3 branches will go towards infinity. Okay? So, there is no open loop 0 in this case, therefore, all the 3 poles where the branches will start from three di different poles and they will end at an infinite 0. So, in the first step, we have found out the number of poles, the number of zeros, 
we have defined how many number of branches are there in the system and how many branches are going to infinity those things are defined in step number 1. In step number 2 we are going to see here the indicators are a little bit different from the given figure. The pole representation generally shown by a cross mark and a zero representation by a small zero. So, this is an S plane, this is J omega axis, this is a real axis, value of S is 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 5. So, we locate the poles on the S plane first. The first pole is at S is equal to 0, the second pole is at S is equal to minus 5, and the third pole is at S is equal to minus 10. So, after finding out the values of or location of the poles, we have shown it on the S plane. There are no zeros in the system, therefore there are three poles which are shown. Now here, if you observe that the step number two and three considerations in which we have to find out what part of the real axis is occupied by the root locus branch. For that, we are going to go for getting the testing point considerations. So, we will stand at any point between 0 and minus 5. So, say for example, I stand at 0 and minus 5 over here somewhere, then I just have to count the number of poles and zeros to the right of that testing point. So, to the right of testing point, I have got only one pole, the value is an odd number. Therefore, from 0 to minus 5, I can darken the portion. So, this is an indicator that the root locus branch is a part of real axis between 0 and minus 5. The second uh, testing point, I take it between minus 5 and 10. So, I stand over here and I count the number of poles and zeros to the right. Now, in this case, there are no zeros. Therefore, the summation of poles is 2 and therefore, it is an even number. And therefore, between a minus 5 and minus 10, there will be no root locus branch. I go beyond minus 10 at this at this point somewhere, then you will find that the count is or the summation is 3 and therefore, after minus 10 continuously up to infinity, I can say that there is a root locus branch. So, this is related to rule number 3, where we have defined that what part of the real axis is occupied by the root locus branches. So, the branch is present between 0 and minus 5 and after minus 10 to infinity, the branch is present. This step generally also helps you out to define the breakaway and break-in points. So, as defined that when the root locus branch is between two poles, naturally what will happen that between 0 and minus 5, there will always exist one breakaway point. We will see in that particular rule how that breakaway point and asymptotes are to be defined. We will move on to the next step. In step number 3, angle of asymptotes given by the formula that is 2q plus 1 into 180 degrees divided by p minus z and this is limiting condition for q to be substituted in the equation. Now, here the limiting condition was for q was p minus z minus 1 and therefore, since we have got three poles, there are no zeros minus 1 will fetch me the value as 2. So, q limiting value is 2 and therefore, q will start from 0, 1 and 2. So, the first part will substitute q is equal to 0 in this equation. So, when you substitute 0 in this equation, I get the value as 60 degrees. When I substitute q is equal to 1, I get the value as 180 degrees and when I substitute q is equal to 2, I get the value as 300 degrees. So, this is the way by which we are going to define the angle of asymptotes. This when we define for the step formations that the angle of asymptotes are nothing but the lines or the angles along which the root locus branches will go towards infinity. So, they are the guiding lines which will take the root locus towards infinity. So, to draw these three angles 60 degrees, 180 degrees and 300 degrees on with respect to 0, 0 part of the real axis and for that angle of asymptotes we have to draw at the point which is called as the centroid. We will define the centroid now at which you are going to define the angles of asymptotes. The formula is in this way 
that the value of centroid sigma over here is summation of real parts of the poles of g of s into h of s that is the open loop transfer function minus summation of real parts of the zeros of the open loop transfer function g of s h of s divided by p minus z. So, here when I say it is a real part of the poles in our case they are the pure cases of real values because s is equal to 0, s is equal to minus 5 and s is equal to minus 10 all values are real. In case if you are getting uh, the pole values as some complex conjugates something like this minus 2 plus minus 2 j. In this case the real values only of minus 2 will be considered for the calculations. Therefore, that formula specifically is defining that it is to be considered with the real part of the poles also the for the real part of the zeros. So, all the real values we are considered as 0, minus 5, minus 10, minus 0 because there is no 0 in the system divided by difference of poles minus zeros. So, since there is no 0, 3 minus 0 is 3 and the answer what we get is minus 5. The meaning of minus 5 is nothing but this is a centroid. So, at minus 5 when you are defining the value of minus 5 over here, this is the centroid at which you have to draw the angles of asymptotes. So, considering this line that is a real axis as a 0 degree line, the angles in anti-clockwise sense are to be considered as positive and clockwise sense are considered as negative in this particular S plane. And therefore, to define the first angle of 60 degrees, 0 to 60 is the first angle defined and this is the angle of asymptote for the first case that is along 60 degrees. The second angle drawn at this point, this is 180 degrees. So, this is the second angle which is going theta 2. The third consideration is of 300 degrees that we have drawn at this point which is going along theta 3 at 300 degrees. And therefore, the centroid at which you are going to draw the angles of asymptotes, those things are defined by this formula. Here the only important concept is that you take the real part of the poles and zeros for the calculations to define the value of centroid at which you are going to draw the angles of asymptotes. And these are the sign conventions, 0 degrees anti-clockwise we take it as positive, clockwise sense we take it as negative values. Next step is break away oblique break in points. So, I will make a little bit correction over here. The poles will be defined by a cross mark, the zeros will be defined by a small circle. Therefore, the first value of pole is defined for s is equal to 0, second value is defined for s is equal to minus 5, third value is defined as for s is equal to minus 10. Now, here in the rule number 3, we have defined the darkened portions. Therefore, between 0 and minus 5, this portion was dark because this was the area where the root locus branch is present and after minus 10 also up to infinity the root locus branch is present. So, this much areas will be darkened and this will help us to define the breakaway or breaking points. Now, for this concept for breakaway or breaking points, we have to consider the equation in the form of the characteristic equation and that characteristic equation is represented by 1 plus g of s into h of s is equal to 0 g of s h of s was a open loop transfer function which was added to 1 in this case. So, it was 1 plus k upon s into s plus phi s plus 10 and when we go on solving this the first thing what you have to do is that you have to keep k on one side and transfer all other terms of s on the right hand side. This is step number 1. So, once you are converted the equation in terms of a characteristic equation that is 1 plus g of s h of s is equal to 0 then we have to mold the equation such that k remains on one side and all other parameters with respect to s power terms are coming on the right hand side. After this what we have to do is we have to go for differentiating both sides. So, we have to differentiate this equation with respect to s by considering the minus sign outside the bracket because again after taking the derivative or differentiating both sides we have to equate with 0 therefore, the importance of this minus sign is negligible. Therefore, over here the equation moves into after going for taking into consideration with respect to the differentiating both parameters or taking the derivatives the equation becomes 3 a square plus 30 s plus 50 equal to 0. 
Now since again it is a multiplying factor of 3 all elements, so I can go for dividing by 3 and then I can rewrite the equation as s square plus 10 s plus 16.667 equated to 0. So this is a quadratic I am getting because the power of s is s raised to 2 and therefore we can easily find out the roots of this equation by considering the equation of minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4 ac divided by 2 a. So, the coefficients of s square is a, coefficient of s is 10 that is b and the co third coefficient c is 16.667. We can substitute in this formula to get the roots and those roots are coming with the values of minus 2.113 and minus 7.88. Now, considering this both values on the s plane, we will find out that we have darkened this portion between 0 and minus 5 and after minus 10 also the portion is darkened. So, the breakaway or breaking point generally which are falling on the real axis will be a part where the root locus branches are lying on the real axis and therefore, between these two poles s is equal to 0 and s is equal to minus y if you observe the first value which is coming as minus 2.113 will be located somewhere over here as minus 2.113. So, this minus 1.2113 will be your first point which is a valid point considered to be as a breakaway point. Why this is called as a breakaway point? Because I told you that breakaway point will always exist between two poles which are present on the real axis. So, the poles or the branches which are going to be starting from the respective poles, they are going to come down up to the break away point, they will break away from this point and therefore, this is a valid breakaway point. If you consider the second value of the root as minus 7.88 to check its validity, I just take it on the s plane minus 7.88. So, this is present between minus 5 and minus 10 where the root locus branch is not a part of real axis. Therefore, between this minus 10 and minus 5, this point which is falling as minus 7.88 is not valid and therefore, only one point which is valid considered as minus 2.113, you have to plot it as a breakaway point for this type of example. We will go to the next step. Then we will find out intersection with the uh, uh, imaginary axis considerations and therefore, that intersection with the imaginary axis generally will be taken care by the routes Hurwitz criteria. So, here we have to define all these things by considering the characteristic equation of the system. We have to prepare the routes R A over here. So, this already we have completed under the part of stability. I will just redefine it over here. S cube plus 15 S square plus 50 S plus K. So, its representation will be in terms of decreasing order of S power S cube plus S square S raise to 1 and S raise to 0. Then I will put the first coefficient of S cube that is 1 over here. I skip one term, I go to the coefficient of s as 50, I substitute as a second element in the first row. Then I come to s to the power 2 row, if the coefficient of s to power is 15 over here and then I skip one, I go to k. So, this completes the first two rows of route table. To, to get the value of this element, what I have to do? I have to take the modulus of 1, 15, 50 and k outside value will be negative and its value which is coming for S1 row that value will be coming as 750 minus k divided by 150. This value naturally will be 0 and the final value you calculate on the basis of two rows above it, it will be naturally coming as k. So, this completes the routes RA and therefore, the intersecting point when you have to define over here, you have to define that whether the, for the system which is nothing but a stable system, all the elements in the first column must be positive and therefore, the first or the range of k where we have to find out the last element that is k must be greater than 0 and the next term which is 750 minus k divided by 150, this also must be greater than 0, it is indicating that these are positive values and when all are with the same sign, therefore, we can predict that the system is stable. Now, here from the second aspect, we can find out the marginal value of k because when you substitute the value of k as which is nothing but less than 750, we get a positive value. Okay? 
by solving this part. But once we substitute the value of k as 750, we get this element as a 0 element. And therefore, when the first column element is 0, second element is 0, the entire row becomes 0 and then we have to make the auxiliary equation of this part. So, preparing the auxiliary equation, that is nothing but prepared over here. The auxiliary equation has been prepared 15 s square plus k is equal to 0 and in this equation, we have to substitute this marginal value of k from this part as k is 750. So, k when you substitute value of 750, when we substitute in this equation k value of 750, the entire row was becoming 0 and on that basis, we have prepared the auxiliary equation of s to the power 2 rho and in this part, this value of k will be substituted as 750 and from that, we can go for finding out the roots. These roots are coming as my plus minus 7.071 plus minus j. Okay, so, these two values what are getting, these are nothing but the points which are intersecting with the imaginary axis. So, these two values will be plotting over the S plane in the figure. Uh, the next step is related to the finding out the part of angle of departure or angle of arrival considerations. So, generally this concept is applicable only when we have got some complex poles or complex zeros. So, if a complex pole is present, we can find out the angle of departure. If a complex zero is present, we can find out angle of arrival. But in this example, since there is no complex pole or zero, there is no need to find out the angle of departure or angle of arrival. And the last step is nothing but combining all the steps what we have taken from the first. So, what we have started with, we have drawn the first x axis that is the real axis, we have drawn the y axis that is the j omega imaginary axis. On this s plane, we have plotted the values of the roots s is equal to 0, s is equal to minus 5, s is equal to minus 10. Okay. Then we have darkened the portion between 0 and minus 5 and after minus 10, it is continuously darkened. After which we have found out the angle of asymptotes and centroid. So, centroid was minus 5. So, centroid minus 5 was marked over here and at this centroid, we have drawn the angles of asymptote one with 60 degrees, one with 8, 180 degrees and the last one with the 300 degrees. So, first angle of asymptote theta 1 is 60, theta 2 is going with 180 degrees along this line and the third angle coming with 300 going along this line. So, these are the three asymptotes first, second and third along which the three root locus branches are going to travel towards the infinite 0. So, the start was that we have to now go for considering whether the system is stable or not. You just keep in mind that all the three branches are going to start from individual poles. So, we have got three poles. So, from each pole, one branch will start. So, one branch will start from s is equal to 0, second branch will start from s is equal to minus 5, third branch will start from s is equal to minus 10. Now, we have already darkened this portion. It indicates that the first branch which has to start from s is equal to 0 and you have to just keep in mind that at respective poles, the value of gain k is always equal to 0. And as this value of gain k is going on increasing from 0 to a particular value that was nothing but up to 750. So, from k equal to 0 up to 750, when you substitute the value of gain k, the system is in a stable state because you can see over here, as we go on increasing the value of gain k from 0 to 750, the root locus branches will start moving. The first branch will start moving from this pole at s is equal to 0, it will come at the breakaway point. So, this is a breakaway point for two branches to break apart. The other branch will start from s is equal to minus 5, it is going to come at this point. This is a common point where the two branches are coming and after which they are going to depart. So, that departure from this part, one is going and cutting this point and the imaginary axis at j 7.071 that is plus. The second branch is coming over here is going to cut at this point of minus j 7.71 and is going to travel along this asymptote towards infinity. This branch is going to travel along this asymptote towards infinity and the third branch which starts from 
s is equal to minus 10, this is going to move along the asymptote of 180 degrees towards infinity. So, in short, you can see that the three branches which have originated from three open loop pools, the all are traveling towards the infinite 0 along the asymptotes. They are breaking away at point minus 2.113, where the point valid point we have already found out in the previous concept. And these branches are traveling along the respective asymptotes towards infinity. So, from 0 value, say for example, we take the first branch which moves from this path from 0 up to the breakaway point, it starts moving and up to this point, which is nothing but the point of intersection up to this point, the system is stable. After which, you can see that when this pole travels in the right half of this plane, the system becomes unstable. And that is also the case for the second branch up to 750, it is nothing but a system which is a stable system. After some value of gain k, when it becomes greater than 750, the system becomes unstable because the poles travel in the right half of the S plane. So, on the basis of the gain values, values which are the gain which we want to vary on that basis, we can predict the system stability, unstability and marginal stability. So, here in the, through this example, we have seen how the steps of the root locus analysis are been plotted and this plotting which is considered for this type of examples over here, where we have included only three poles, there are three real poles, uh, the cases might be different, it might be coming in terms of a pool and a zero combinations, we can have real values of poles and zeros, also we can have the complex conjugate type of considerations which will remain in the second or the third quantum considerations and that particular type of uh, complex conjugate pair if it is coming, then we require one more additional rule that was nothing but to find out the angle of departure for that particular cases. So, here we are going to stop with this concept with the consideration that whatever pole considerations on the basis of which the gain value considerations, how the poles are going to or how the root locus branches are going to travel from one point to another to in order to show how the system stability, unstability and marginal stability considerations are considered. Thank you.